Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're solving Leet Code Problem 1539, Kth Missing Positive Number. Given an array of positive integers sorted in strictly increasing order and an integer k, return the kth positive integer that is missing from this array. For example, if we have 2, 3, 4, 7, 11 and k equals 5, the output should be 9. Why is that? Well, let's look at the missing positive integers. Obviously, 1 is missing because the array starts at 2. Then we have 2, 3, 4, so those are all in an order, that's fine. Then we go from 4 to 7, so 5 and 6 are missing. And then we have what? We have 7 to 11, so that means that 8, 9, and 10 are missing. And obviously, at that point, we will have found our fifth missing number, which is 9. Now, it's also important that maybe k was higher, maybe it was 8. Let's consider the case that after 11, there's nothing. So that means that everything to the left of 11 is also missing. So in the same way that if the array doesn't start at, um, I guess, 0, um, then everything to the right of it, or sorry, to the left of it is missing. Same way if when our array ends, everything to the right of it is also missing. So we'll keep that in mind when we actually build our solution. Uh, again, another example, if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and k equals 2, this is actually the case where we want to go with our right bound because everything from 1 to 4 is there. So that means that everything to the right of 4 is missing. So we just need to get two elements to the right of uh, 4, and obviously that's 6. So looking at the question, it's really straightforward how to solve it. Obviously, you, you can kind of just figure it out by looking at it and drawing it out. Unfortunately, we need to write an algorithm to do this. Um, but as you see, it's relatively simple, and there's three cases that we need to handle. And the first case is um, starting at uh, 1, right? Do we start at the number 1? I think in this problem, actually, um, there is no 0 here. We just consider that the starting number is 1. But even if it was 0, we can use the same logic. So if the array doesn't start at 1, then everything to the left of our start is missing obviously right if we start at four then we're missing one two three so what we want to do is we want to account for that when we actually start so if our start is four and k equals two then actually we don't need to do anything because we know that the the second missing positive is just two but if you know let's say we start at four and k equals seven then we need to account that we've already needed to take three elements here so we're actually looking for 4 as we go from left to right over the array. So once we handle the start, we're going to then look for missing elements between. So um, missing in between, right? And the way that we do this is we're going to compare two elements. So, ele so nums of i versus nums of i plus 1, right? And we're going to look, is the difference between them, so the difference, does it equal to 1? If the difference is 1 uh, between nums of i and nums of i minus 1, or, you know, nums of i and nums plus 1, if the difference is 1, then that means that they're obviously next to each other because they're sorted, right? If it's not, then we need to basically account for however big that difference is, that there's numbers between them. So, for example, here we went from 4 to 7. We need to account for the fact that there's two numbers here and basically decrement k um, because we've now taken those numbers. The last case is going to be the opposite of the first one, which is the end. If we still haven't found our numbers, then we simply just need to take however many elements we need left um, from k from the end. So if we end at 11, then obviously 12, 13, 14, and so on to infinity are missing. If we need two more elements, then we just take whatever the end element is plus two, and that gives us our final uh, missing positive. So as we go along, we'll basically decrement k um, every time we basically are missing an element, and then as soon as k equals zero, whatever element k equals zero at, um, that's you know where we actually end it. So let's actually go into the code editor and code this one up. It's relatively simple. The only tricky bit is really this the starting um, position and the ending position. Everything else is pretty straightforward because you're just comparing uh, pairwise indexes, checking if the difference is one, um, and then doing something if it's not. So let's go to the code editor and type this one up. <laughs> 
remember that there's three cases we want to handle and the first is we want to be checking whether or not our array actually starts at one that's like that's the starting number here so if it doesn't equal to one then we need all the elements from whatever one to the start of the array are because they're missing so we're going to say if array zero does not equal to one then we want to say okay there's two cases here either k is small enough that it's contained within the distance from one to the start so for example if k equals one and our start is five obviously there's four missing positives one two three four we simply grab the first one so in this case, if k is actually smaller than the distance between 1 and the start of our array, then we can simply just return whatever the kth number of those missing ones is. So we're going to check if array uh, 0 minus 1, so basically the distance between array 0 and 1, if it's greater than or equal to k, then we can simply return k because the kth missing number will be k, right? Pretty simple. Otherwise, we need to basically take those numbers and say that we are taking them. So k will basically be the number which stores how many more positives we need uh, now that we've kind of started the algorithm. So we're going to decrement k by however many numbers are missing. So array 0 minus 1. So that's how many numbers are missing between 1 and the start of the array. And now we need to basically find k more in the array. So now what we want to do is we want to go through our array from left to right and basically compare two pairwise positions and make sure that uh, the distance between them is one. If it is, that means they're next to each other. If not, then that means that there's a gap. So for example, if four and seven were next to each other, uh, then we know that there's a gap of five and six. And remember, our problem is actually give it to us um, the numbers are sorted. So we can always just assume that they're sorted. We don't have to worry about um, you know, potentially seven coming before four. It's a sorted array, so that's why this works. So we're gonna set i equals to zero and basically just start iterating over our array. So we're gonna say while i is actually less than the length of array minus one. The reason we're gonna do array minus one is because we're going to be comparing to um, our index plus one, so we don't actually want to go outside of the bounds of our array. <clears throat> so we're gonna say the difference between those elements is gonna be array of i plus one minus what is the array of i and we're going to say if that difference does not equal to one then we want to basically figure out how many numbers are between them so we're going to say for num in range starting from array of i plus one because we're basically finding how many numbers are between them we don't want to count array of i in there because obviously array of i exists in the array um, up until array of i plus one and this time we don't do plus one uh, to whatever this value is because range is actually not inclusive of the endpoint. So we don't have to worry about accidentally counting array of i plus one. So for each number in there, we're going to decrement k by one. Now, remember k at this point stores how many more elements we need to find. If k ever reaches zero, then whatever number caused it to reach zero in this case is actually the kth missing positive. So we're gonna say if not k, then we want to return whatever number in this for loop actually caused k to be zero because that was the final number we needed. So we just return num. Otherwise, we can simply just increment uh, i by one and continue on through our array. Now we get to the final case, which is that what happens when we finish processing our entire array, but there's still uh, elements we need to find. In this case, remember that say, for example, if we had k equals 11 and we needed you know, to find two more elements, then we can just add 2 to 11. And obviously, that will give us 12 and 13. 13 is the missing positive. So we can simply say, OK, if k still exists, once this while loop ends, we can simply return whatever the end of the array is plus k, and we're done. So let's run this, make sure it works. And wrong answer. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's double check this. So if it doesn't equal to one, that's fine. Um, this is fine. Return k. k minus equals array of one. Okay, uh, let's see. Length of array minus one plus one. 
Oh, pff, equals. Okay, there we go. That should fix it. And now it's accepted. Let's submit it. And cool. What is the time and space complexity? Okay, apologies for cutting out there. Someone came to my door to deliver something, so I had to run. What is the time complexity? So in the worst case, we have to iterate over the entirety of the array. So it's simply big O of n. We need to check every single uh, index and that's it. For space complexity, we don't use any extra space. Um, we're just using the variables that we have here. We don't define anything new. Um, so it's just big O of one. Cool, that is how you solve kth missing positive. Definitely a good question because even though it's pretty simple intuition wise, there are these kind of checks at the boundaries which make it a little bit tricky, but it's definitely an easy question and a really good one for just learning how to kind of work with leak code and thinking in an algorithmic way. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave it a like and a comment? It really helps me out with the algorithm and why not subscribe to the channel to help me grow and reach 10,000 subs sometime soon. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.